This episode's all about freezing motion, and I'm here in the studio to demonstrate how to do it. It's all happening on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions on Adorama TV. If you've got a question, just go to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. If it's one that I think is going to help a lot of other photographers, I just might pick your question to answer here on a future show. This week, I've got one sent in by John H., and he wants to know, I recently did a band shoot in a studio. In a few shots, the band members jumped. In almost every shot, one or more of the subjects were not frozen. I was shooting at 125th of a second, F11, ISO 100. Any idea what happened? Was my shutter speed too slow? Thanks, John. This is a great topic that many people have trouble with. Now, there are a couple of things that could be going on here. Let's talk about freezing motion first without using flash. Now, as you suggest, this is done by using a fast shutter speed. In a DSLR camera, or when you're using the mechanical shutter on a mirrorless camera, there's a metal curtain that sits in front of your sensor. And when that sensor is exposed to light, that's when your image is captured. With the shutter curtain covering it, no light hits the sensor. So when you push the shutter button to take a picture, that curtain moves out of the way, exposing the sensor to light. Now, technically, there are two curtains, and the opening is more of a slit. But for simplicity purposes, let's just say the curtain opens and the curtain closes. Now, your shutter speed, which hopefully you're setting by shooting in manual exposure mode, tells the camera how fast to move that curtain out of the way. Now, by the way, mirrorless cameras can use an electronic shutter instead of a mechanical one. An electronic shutter has no shutter curtain, and the sensor is just exposed all of the time. And when you take a picture, what happens is the electronic circuitry is activated to collect the light for a period of time equal to the shutter speed that you specify. Now, some mirrorless cameras, like the Canon R5 and the R3, for example, give you the option to shoot with a mechanical or an electronic shutter. Other cameras might not have a mechanical shutter at all, so your only option is electronic. Now, there are pros and cons for both of those, but I'm going to save that for another video if some of you uh, send in that question. Now, either way, the faster your shutter speed, the less time that sensor is exposed to light coming in through your lens. The changes, this actually changes the brightness of your image, of course, because the longer the sensor is exposed, the brighter your image and vice versa. But besides exposure, changing your shutter speed can also affect whether you freeze something in motion or not. Now, I've got Lizzie here in the studio today. Thank you so much, Lizzie, for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, and also, by the way, uh, I've just moved into a brand new studio space here, very close to my old one in New York City. Uh, it is a bit of a work in progress, but I'm looking forward to shooting in here as often as I can. I'm sure you'll be seeing this space more and more often here on the show. Now, to photograph Lizzie, I'm using the Canon R5 and a 24 to 70 millimeter 2.8 lens. And first, I'm going to shoot uh, without flash, right? So I'm going to turn the flash off, and I'm just going to first get my baseline exposure. So if she's not moving at all, I know I'm going to, it's pretty dark in here right now. We've got some daylight coming in, but it's not very bright at all. So I'm going to crank my ISO way up. Let's go all the way up to something like 8,000, 10,000. Let's go to 10,000 of a second. Uh, excuse me, 10,000 ISO. I'm going to go down to 2.8. And my shutter speed to get a decent exposure, I can see on my mirrorless, is going to be about 1 25th of a second. So I'm just going to shoot her standing still right now. And simple, right? Easy. <laughs> We're done. Thanks, Lizzie. Appreciate it. No, uh, that's, that's very simple. But she's not moving. I'm on a tripod. So there's going to be no motion at all, of course. But now, I'm going to have Lizzie as a dancer, very talented dancer, so I'm going to have her do a nice jump for me, and we're going to see what that shutter speed does. This is with no flash, so go for it whenever you're ready, Lizzie. Boom. All right. A lot of her upper body's not moving too much when she's at the height of the jump, but if you zoom in and you look at her feet, you can definitely see motion in there, and it's not going to be frozen. So that's going to be a problem when you're shooting with a action with a slow shutter speed. So what I want to do is I want to speed up my shutter speed so that shutter curtain is not open for very long. So to do that, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do it here because I just don't have much ambient light. But just for fun, let's crank the ISO up to 32,000. I would never shoot that way. But let's go to 32,000. And then I can push my shutter speed up to about 800. All right? So I'm at 800 at 28 at 32,000 ISO. So whenever you're ready, go for it. Boom. All right. Now, you can see she's much more frozen in that case, but uh, first of all, I'm a 32,000 ISO, which I would not normally shoot that way. And um, second of all, even at 800th of a second, there's still a little bit of motion in her extremities. So if I want to really freeze her completely, um, I'm going to have to make some changes. So that's really how shutter speed affects the freezing of motion. 
But when I start to add flash, how does that change things? Well, when you use normal flash, there's a limit as to how fast you can set your shutter speed. I'm going to talk about why that is in a second, but it's called your flash sync speed, and it's usually between 125th and 250th of a second. I'm also only talking about cameras with a focal plane shutter. Uh, that's the cameras that most of us are using. Medium and large format cameras usually have a leaf shutter, and that's gonna give you a faster flash sync, but traditional 35 millimeter size bodies are almost always focal plane shutters. Either way, many flashes today have a special mode called high speed sync that allows you to shoot at any shutter speed with flash. Now it's not on by default, so you have to activate it if you wanna use it. But instead of firing one single burst of light, the flash actually pulses a lot of times very quickly. And it's almost like it turns it into a constant light. The downsides are that high speed sync eats up a lot of power on your flashes and you don't get as much light as you do with a normal flash. So you're gonna have to crank up your ISO to compensate, but it's definitely a way to freeze action. In John's question though, he said he was shooting at 125th of a second. That slow shutter speed tells me he, was, he wasn't using high speed sync and he was using normal flash. The way normal flash works, and again, I'm oversimplifying a little bit, don't yell at me in the comments, but the way it works is that the shutter curtain opens up fully, then the flash goes on, the flash goes off, and then the shutter curtain closes. And this all happens really, really fast, but that's essentially what's going on. In the studio, at John's exposure settings, that's gonna kill all of the ambient light. And I'm gonna show you, I'm at 125th of a second, let's go down to uh, 125th of a second at F11 at 100 ISO and see how that looks. That's the settings that, that John was at. So I'm gonna go down to 125 at F11 and 100 ISO. I'm all the way at 32,000, let's go down to 100. And I'm just gonna take a picture and it's completely black, right? Um, so I'm gonna want to add in some flash so I get an exposure. Since my exposure is completely black without it, the only time the sensor is gonna be picking up any light for my image is during the time that the flash is on emitting light. Now, how long the flash is on, that's called the flash duration. The flash duration is shorter than the time the curtain is open and the sensor is being exposed. Essentially, the short flash duration becomes your shutter speed despite your actual shutter speed being much slower. Now, if you were in a pitch black room, let's say, and you left your shutter wide open for 10 seconds, you'd still have a completely black frame. You could then fire a flash in the middle of that long exposure, and let's say the flash duration is two thousandths of a second. Essentially, two thousand, one two thousandths, two thousandths is your shutter speed because you're only gonna get an exposure for that very short period of time. Now, one thing that could have happened with John is if the ambient light in the room he was shooting in was too bright. So that means he might have had some more ambient light seeping into his exposure. If there was some sunlight coming in or something like that, that would have definitely caused some blur. So if you're trying to freeze action, the first thing is to make sure that your exposure before adding flash is completely black or almost completely black. But with his settings, I'm guessing he killed off all of the ambient light um, unless he was in a super bright room. Now, exactly how long is the flash duration? Well, <laughs> that depends, right? It really depends on what flash you're using and what power you have it at. Most flashes get faster or shorter flash durations as you turn the power down. However, all flashes are a bit different and some work the other way around, so make sure you check the manual of your flash to be sure. In the case of a Canon Speedlight, which I shoot with an awful lot, the manual tells me that full power is gonna give me a flash duration of about 3 20th of a second. All the way down at 1 28th power, very low, it's around 19 thousandths of a second. So I'm gonna keep it as low as I can here in this shoot. I'm with Lizzie here, I'm gonna keep my light pretty simple. I've got a single Canon 600 EX RT speed light in this glow two by three foot softbox. It's a nice big uh, light source. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna you know, go crazy with lighting here. I just wanna get some light on her so we can see how uh, she's if we've frozen with the action and if it's nice and soft lights, that's good. So first thing I'm gonna do is I've got my Canon speed light there. I've got my transmitter. I'm gonna put this, set this speed light all the way down to 1 28th power. Now, cause I know I wanna keep my flash duration relatively fast. Now I'm gonna be at John's settings. So I'm still at 1 25th of a second at F11 at 100 which we know is a black frame. So let's do one more jump here with the flash at 120. Let me make sure I'm synced up, hold on. Make sure this flash is, sometimes when you don't use it for a while, I lose sync, but now we're synced back up again. And Lizzie, whenever you're ready, go for it. Boom, all right. And you can see that frame is still pitch black. 
I'm only at 128th of a second, uh, excuse me, 128th power on that flash. That's not enough light at 100 ISO at f11 to get anything. So I'm going to have to make some adjustments here to get an exposure out of that flash. So I'm going to dial this flash all the way up to full power. That's a lot brighter than the 128th power. So let's go full power. And again, I'm still at John's settings. Let's go for it, Lizzie. Give me a nice big jump. Perfect. Now, you can see I'm still even a little underexposed at full power, right? Speed lights are actually great because they're portable and easy to travel with, but that small size and the fact that they only take AA batteries means that I can only get so much power out of them, right? As I turn it up to maximize the power, I'm getting slower flash durations and not freezing everything. That's not really an issue for a portrait shoot, and I use speed lights all the time but I try not to shoot them at full power because I'm going to have slower recycle times and the batteries are going to die quicker. Now I can crank my ISO up, but I need to be careful not to bring in any ambient light. And you can see on that photograph that I just did, I'm at, because I'm at full power, the flash duration is relatively slow and her extremities are not frozen, right? So what do I do? The other answer here is to use a more powerful flash. Now I've got the Flashpoint Explore Power 1200 Pro. It's a big studio strobe that has a lot of power. It's just much less portable. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to move out this speed light. We don't really know the exact watt seconds on a speed light, but it's under 100. It's somewhere between 50 and 100. Um, but let's move that out. I'm going to move this bad boy in here and just get a big, nice, soft light. This is the, uh, the head is up here. The pack is down here. Um, this is a lot of power coming out of this sucker. So um, 1,200 watt seconds. The thing about this is it actually tells me the flash duration, which is very nice. So as I dial it, um, as I go, let's pick, let's try eighth power. So eighth power on this 1,200 watt second pack, it's telling me I'm getting 2,470, one 2,470 2, of a second flash duration. So essentially, that's my new shutter speed, even if I'm at 125th of a second like John's settings, right? So let's leave this. I first I have to switch this Canon transmitter from one pocket to the Flashpoint transmitter, the other pocket. Uh, and let's get that on there. And I am at, let's go to, let's set it here. So let's go to eighth power. And I'm now at eighth power. Um, let's go, I'm at John's settings, 125th, F11 at 100. You know what? Let's go to quarter power. I think I'm going to need a little bit more than that. So let's go to quarter power. I'll tell you the flash duration on that is, what is it there? Get some light on it. It is 1510, so one fifteen hundredth of a second. That's, that's pretty fast. Um, so let's see how that looks. And whenever you're ready, Lizzie, go for it. Boom. Perfect. All right, and you can see now I'm at 125th of a second on my shutter speed, but my flash duration is 15 hundredths of a second. So very, very fast. We can go faster than that at lower, uh, lower flash power, but at quarter power, at 100 ISO, at F11, just to try to match John's settings, I'm getting that 15 hundredths of a second, and everything is frozen. Her foot is completely frozen, her hair, her face, everything is completely frozen. That's the answer. John, that's the answer to your question. I don't think it's the slow shutter speed that caused you to have some motion blur. I think it's your flash duration. Now, I don't know what flash you were using, so I'm not sure if you need more power or less to get a faster flash duration from your particular flash. Either look it up in the manual or just try it both ways and see what works better. But I hope that helps you, John, and everyone else watching. Lizzie, huge thank you. I appreciate you being here uh, for jumping over and over for me. I really do appreciate it. The pictures look awesome. Um, you can follow Lizzie on Instagram. I'm going to put a link to her Instagram down in the description. And remember, if you're not already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel, do me a favor and click that subscribe button down below. Hit the little bell icon. That way you'll be notified as soon as new shows come out all week long for myself and the other hosts right here on Adorama TV. I'm going to be back next time with a new question, so keep them coming by heading to askdavidbergman.com and filling out the form. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time right here on Ask David Bergman.